Alright, welcome back. Uh, Django Reinhardt Mana Swing Lick 3. Um, this is going to be fair, finishing off the first half of the code change. Before what I think of as the bridge section, starting with the D minus 6. So, um, so a little lick which starts with a diminished arpeggio, uh, starting on the 6th fret of the D string, going to 4th fret of the G. 7th fret of the G, 6th fret of the B. Now I'm fingering it like uh, Jammy Aranhart with just 2nd and 1st fingers. Of course you could finger it in a more reasonable way uh, and play uh, starting with that D string with the 3rd finger. do it a finger per fret. You've got lots of options there for the fingering, uh, but Django would have fingered it with just fingers one and ten. Now this particular lick is over the E7 chord in the chord change. So let's just remind ourselves of the chord change. We've got two bars of A minor, two minor, two bars of D minor six, two bars of E7, two bars of A minor six. So we're over E7 lick there. So you might be thinking, why are we playing a diminished lick over the top of this E7? Um, now in jazz, very common uh, to use diminished uh, licks over the top of seventh chords. So here we're playing a G sharp diminished lick over the top of the E7. So, because diminished um, chords, diminished arpeggios, can start on any of their roots, and there are full three uh, frets between each note, this could be considered an F diminished, G sharp diminished, B diminished, or D diminished. Um, often uh, jazzers will think about the diminished arpeggio as coming in a half step above the root of whatever uh, dominant chord they're playing over the top of. So if, for example, we were playing over the top of a C dominant chord, we could use a D flat diminished arpeggio over the top. And it does resolve as well. Um, it produces a very jazzy, slightly outside sound, uh, which you've almost certainly heard before. Um, so, in this uh, particular situation, we're over an E7, and uh, Django is playing this diminished arpeggio, and then resolving down to the E, with a half step hammer pull between 5 and 6 on the B string. So, let's just put that together. And then we're going to resolve down to the A minor. So remembering the chord change, we're going from the E dominant 7, resolving to an A minor 6. And then we resolve down to the A via a pull-off from 5 to 4 on the G, slide to 2 on the G, and then hit that another two times. Now, for the articulation that I'm doing a pull-off, Django Reinhardt may well have picked every note in that triplet. Um, listening to the record, it's not clear. It's so quick. I can't tell. But Django certainly does do some very fast picking with um, uh, chromatic licks where... Um, I can't quite do it, but you'll get the idea where he kind of goes... <laughs> Um, just as kind of a, a, a flash lick at certain points. So he does do that idea, so it is possible that he could be actually picking the triplet very, very quickly there. Um, that's to taste, obviously. Uh, if you're picking, uh, uh, is not, you're not quite up on your alternate picking, uh, it's a good point to do some practice on your alternate picking. Um, 
and if you need any help on that, uh, give me a shout. I've got loads of alternate picking exercises, uh, which you can uh, thoroughly entertain yourself with. Um, anyway, let's put that whole lick together. Uh, okay, one, two, three. And I'll just do that a little bit slower. One, two, three. So that is lick number three for Minor Swing by Tango Roundhouse. All right, cheers guys.